morning. Um, the announcements for today, July the 23rd, uh, we would like to take a moment and welcome our guest artist, Rachel Charbel, playing the violin, and Molly Norcross on the French horn. Also, thank you to everyone who donated items and helped at the annual 4th of July watch party. We had about 100 adults and children attend. There were fireworks all around us, and the weather was perfect. Everyone enjoyed snacks, drinks, and cornhole. The kids had lots of fun with bubbles and chalk. It was great using our beautiful campus for this community celebration. Thank you for continuing generous support of For His Glory Food Pantry. For the month of July, we are collecting cereal and cereal bars. Is anyone interested in reactivating the book club? If so, please contact Carol Thomas. End of the quarter statements are available on the table in the narthex. And please join Pastor Marty for sermon talk after worship today. Would everybody please join me in the call to worship? And it's based on Psalm 139 and 86. O oh Lord, you have searched us and known us. Where can we go from your spirit, or where can we flee from your presence? Wherever we go in heaven, on earth or below, you are there. Teach us your way, O oh Lord. That we may walk in your truth. Let us worship our God. Join me with the prayer of adoration and confession. Almighty God, we petition you in this moment as you grace us with your presence. We desire to lean on you even more today than we have in the past. We bring to you our concerns, though we suspect that our problems largely stem from paying attention to our worries and woes. Instead of embracing your love and concern for us, cause us to find the hope that is in us and to patiently wait for the inspiration you have reserved for those who boldly attempt to work your will and love. 
Rebuild our desire to serve you as your word refreshes us from the week that has passed. We trust in the knowledge that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. O oh Lord, we recognize ourselves within the confines of our difficulties and against the backdrop of a world that so often insists on functioning without an expectation of your grace, love, or judgment. We confess that the world confounds our senses at times and our judgment is clouded in the face of the comforts and conveniences of the modern American marketplace. Free us in our time together of our cravings and indulgences and cause us to discover the joy of being children in the house of blessedness. Cause goodness and mercy to surround our best efforts. We come to you as you have welcomed us in the past. Come, Lord Jesus, find us now in this time of worship, we pray. Amen. Rights of our assurance when he says, We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies, for in hope we are saved. Dearly beloved, believe the good news. In, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ we, are we are forgiven, forgiven now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. First scripture lesson today is from Isaiah chapter 44 verses 6 through 8 and Psalm 86 11 through 17. These are from the New Revised Standard Version. Our first scripture reading is from the major prophets of the Old Testament. Isaiah 44 6 through 8. Hear God's word as I share it with you. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. Our second scripture reading today is from the poetry of the Old Testament, Psalm 86, 11 through 17. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to rever your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the deaths of Sheol. O God, the insolent rise up against me. A band of ruffians seeks my life, and they do not set you before them. 
But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant. Save the child of your maidservant. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame. Because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Many thanks to Rachel, Molly, and Josh for the beautiful music today. God's word has already happened uh, as we were listening to them play this morning. Our next reading is from Paul's letter to the church at Rome. It's the eighth chapter, verses 12 through 25 from the New Revised Standard Version. And the, starting with verse 12, the very first part of the chapter is talking about life in the spirit. So this is the last part of that. And then he's talking about the future glory that is to be. Hear Paul's words. So then, brothers and sisters, we are obligated not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption. And when we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if we in fact suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its enslavement to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning together as it suffers together the pains of labor, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what one already sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. May God bless this reading, hearing, and understanding of the Holy Word. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable, O Lord, our God, and our Redeemer. Amen. When Paul writes, and we read these letters, uh, sometimes uh, it calls us into his presence as we read these words. And I think sometimes when we're searching for the will of God, I think sometimes we decide what we want to do. Paul has already went through some of these issues. And so his trials are our trials as we try to figure out what we are. Uh, there's a, something familiar about when Paul talks about his best efforts in confronting Christ because sometimes those are our efforts as we try to confront this very same Christ. Struggle, struggles, confusion, uh, confessions, those are all the same things for us as well. And then you come to this text and where Paul, I think what this text is for, for me is saying, we are family and we're family with Paul, we're family with one another and through Christ we are the family of God. So when I say the word family, what does that generate for you in your mind? Is it familiar? Does it make you relax? What does it do? Uh, whenever I read Paul, and of course I read it better than Bob does, but he had a tough text that day, I'll have to admit. But what he does, though, he's challenging us. And, the, and sometimes the word we use is convicting us uh, about what it is we are, who we are, why we're here, and how do we live our lives. So it's almost as if he's calling across the years and calling us to why are we saying that we are people of God. Now, I don't know about you, but growing up as the eldest of three children, uh, I never had to worry about the comparison. That was my brothers and sisters issue. They, had to be, they were always compared to me. But we are always comparing one another. And as we got older, my sister's the degreed RN. My brother's is the retired IT guy. I do what I do. But we still tried to judge each other until we learned that we can help each other. And it's just sort of what family's like. It's always that competition 
of who can be the best. I think that's understandable because as Paul talks, we're in the flesh. We're just human beings. That's who we are. It's how we function. And we're just transparently human when we judge each other trying to think we can be better and we worry that they are better than us. I don't think any of us do that. We all write our own story or we try to tell our own story. Uh, when we tell our story, we always want to make ourselves look good. When you fill out an application or in the church, we call them profiles for pastors. I'm not going to tell you my worst traits, right? I'm going to try to sell my, my good traits. The problem is you can do that with family, but after a while, my sister would say to me, that's not really the way it happened, Marty. You know, I mean, they call, account, they call us into accountability. And I think there are no secrets from God, just like there are no secrets from family sometimes. And so Paul's warning us in no uncertain terms that living in the flesh, living in society is a problem for us. And I think what happens is then we limit ourselves to what it is to be good, what it is to be worthy, what it is to be holy, about who we can be. And we waste a lot of time and energy trying to prove ourselves to other people for what reason? That's what Paul's challenging us. And I think sometimes we resist God reaching out to us because we're so involved in what we think is the way to go. And it's just that human thing. Of, and it doesn't allow things to happen. And then we're limited by what we can hear or feel or sense or know about God. And it's like anything in life. Eventually, you, you have to ask for help. And so we need help. And God's trying to, or Paul's trying to remind us that when he has this phrase, we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. We already have the answer. And then he goes in this phrase, he says, Abba, Father. What he's saying is we can call out to God as a father or parent figure and be received because we are already family. And our birthright, our birthright, is to claim that closeness to God and to each other. And so if we're all part of the family, then the question becomes, when you look at yourself in the bigger scope of things, where are you in the family? Can you see yourself in the big picture? Maybe not. You know. But God, God sees us. And God knows where our part in the family is. And we have to be reminded that we need to claim that. I think part of it is when we understand who we are a little bit, there is a transformation that takes place, an internal transformation of understanding who we are and why we're here. When I was growing up and I played Little League for St. Lawrence Church, this was be when you had to do confession before mass on Sunday morning. So being the lone Protestant, I had to sit in the back row of St. Lawrence Church. And then we came back and I was always fascinated with the interior of St. Lawrence Church. And then we would come back, my dad would be changing the sign on the front of the church, and he'd look at his watch and he'd say, you're running a little late. And I'd say, well, their confessions ran a little long today. And we didn't know what he would say. He said, well, do you, did Marty go into church? And they'd say, yeah. So do you want to see where Marty worships? Of course, in that day, we're talking the 60s, they would not walk across the doorway into the sanctuary. But for me, you know, we always think this is a sanctuary, St. Lawrence Church had a sanct it was a feeling of sanctuary. Um, being a pastor, we, I'm always looking at going, we would travel, Betty and I would always go into the old churches, and you get a feel that this is a place of God. But the reality is, sanctuaries in, in us. We gather as churches because we're part of the family. And the sanctuary we feel is because we're together. It's not because we're here. We would have the same feeling if we were downstairs in the fellowship hall. 
we're still the sanctuary. And part of that's your place in the family, how you fit. And it's our privilege to gather and to worship. We come here because we want to. And that's a reason for celebration, and that's a reason to plan forward. And a lot of times, you know, I'm that way. I mean, I'll put it off. I'm too busy now. I'll do something later, you know, and God keeps knocking on my door, and I keep saying, no, I can't do that. The decisions I've made in the last five or seven years have all done mostly because physically I can't do what I want to do. And I think that's God just saying, hey, you need to look at what's going on. But I know when I make that decision to ask, there are people who help me. From all the congregations I've been involved with in my career and growing up in, there are those people who are all family. And we become more effective in who we are as that particular member of the family. And what Paul is insisting is that we should not be afraid or fear not to what we did before, not to death that will come eventually. We're filled by the Spirit, and because we're filled by the Spirit, we should live in the moment. What can I do with the family to move forward, to share the good news of Jesus Christ? We're the children of God, and we're in this family together. And as Paul writes, we have been adopted you know, sometimes we say, you know, I don't really like my mom and dad because I was born to them. I can't change that. But that didn't happen to us. God adopted us. God wanted us to be part of the family. That's different. And so it's also the other way around. We accept the adoption to be part of the family. I struggle with what sometimes that means for me. I think we struggle as people of God, what that means for each one of us. How does God want us to be? And so what it is, it brings to us, what is the importance in this life? It's about the good news of Jesus Christ. It's about being together in the spirit. It's about sharing with each other our journeys and our travels like we do at prayer time. It's about knowing that we are together and to welcome God's presence in our lives. We're not alone. We're never alone. We're together, God, the Spirit, Christ, and each other. What else could you expect from family to help one another? Thanks be to God. Amen. Our affirmation of faith today is entitled Trusting God. Uh, I'm going to ask those who are able in body and spirit to, to stand and let us affirm our faith together and then for our song of reflection. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba Father. In sovereign love, God created the world good and makes everyone equally in God's image, male and female of every race and people to live as one community. Loving us still, God makes us heirs with Christ of the covenant, like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like a father who runs to welcome the prodigal home. God is faithful still. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen.
comes a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know it's the spirit As we come into our time of joys and concerns, first I need to say, did you notice Larry and I sang that last song like a barbershop people sing it? So are there any joys or concerns to be shared with this community of faith? I have some that some folks have already handed to me this morning and I have our list, but are there any new ones? John. If you didn't hear first, it was thanks for everybody with their concern for Susan. Uh, he and I had been communicating. Uh, so the, the initial place where John wanted for rehab, insurance company said no. So he's applying to another place and hopefully uh, that'll occur tomorrow or Tuesday at the outside so she can be somewhere to get her therapy. And right now your son is with her so you can be with us today. Good, thank you. Are there any others? If not, uh, the list we can be reminded of the, the PNC uh, for Carol Thomas's friend Cody Cooper and also on the loss of her Aunt Rose and she was there with them for that in the service and we're glad she's back today. Uh, Steve Brading's brother-in-law Gary, again for the wildfires in Canada. Uh, those suffering from the widespread heat and flooding that's going through the country and people trying to deal with that. Uh, we found out that Mike Kester's wife, Debbie, uh, has back issues, they're working on her spine, they can't diagnose exactly what's going on, so we would ask prayers for them. Uh, Bob Murphy's asking prayers for his cousin, uh, Scott, last name, Micheling, needs prayers, so we ask prayers for Scott, and then Diane Lenz asks prayers for the family of Bill Dupree, who passed away last week. So as we continue to remember all these people, the situations that we have raised before God, uh, let us continue to be an attitude of prayer as we take time to do that as we move into this silent time. Um, part of it, we talk about the spirit being with us. And so during this silent time, as you breathe in, sort of feel like you're breathing in the spirit and then exhaling and then breathing in God again as we prepare uh, to pray. Let us pray. Oh God, how precious it is for us 
and how pleasing it must be to you when you see your daughters and your sons live, live and work together in unity, to gather together in worship in a place where we feel safe. And we join together not only to worship you, but to be strengthened spiritually, to go forth from this place to carry out the purposes that you have asked us to do and continue to share with others how important it is to be together in family. We know, oh God, that you know us. You know us inside and out. You know us through and through. You know what we do, what we think, even what we plan for the future. And yet, you love us. And yet, you hold us. And yet you gift us with grace and mercy. May we come to know, O oh God, and to recognize how important we are to you and to each other. That we have a need for each one you know, as we journey in this life. And together we're yearning to be loved, yearning to be seen, yearning to be known. So may this time of worship today make us mindful of what is important. What is important to us individually, corporately. We have prayed for a variety of things. There are people who are grieving. There are people who are struggling with medical issues. There are people who are rebuilding their lives from natural disasters. There are individuals in decision there are those we have not voiced aloud, but you know. So we've come together to pray, to thank you, to bless your name, and to rejoice about the love that you care for each one of us. So we ask that you be with each in their need. We ask that you continue to be with us as we journey in this day. But most of all, we thank you for the gift, the presence of your son, Jesus who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we enter into church today, the plate was in the narthex for our offering, and we will take time now to bring it forward to be dedicated to the glory of God. All blessings flow. Almighty Father, you have filled our hands and hearts with such good things. We know we must make room for the blessings of the future as we share the remarkable abundance of our past. Accept these gifts from our hands and the overflow of our hearts. Allow us to make room for the love that will ultimately find us, becoming the people you envision us to be. Cause the coffers of this ministry to overflow in order to bless the needs you know of in this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bind us together.
was a synopsis of my sermon, that we're bound together by the love of God to be family in this place and with other churches, to spread the good news of Jesus Christ with those who need to hear it, because everyone needs to be in part of the family. Share the good news with those who need to hear it. Share with others what binds you together, what brings you to this place. So until we meet again, let us go in the name of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, let us go in peace. Amen. Thank you.